And this ugliest of unofficial election campaigns still has two years to run. As I mentioned earlier, Insiders this week marked his 10th anniversary. Our first guest was the then Prime Minister John Howard, and to mark the occasion, he joins us again this morning. And later on, we'll take a none too serious look back over those 10 years, and Mike Bowers will do the same with the special talking pictures. But before then, we'll check out the Sunday papers around the country. And the Prime Minister kind of went, I guess, into the lion's den. She went to the Hazelwood plant in the Latrobe Valley yesterday, Annabelle. Yeah, we don't know what happened. She had a private meeting with uh, workers at the Hazelwood plant and um, although um, you have no real grounds for assuming it would be any uh, more unattractive than the little collection of images we've just seen, um, what this week's been about for her and I think yesterday just emphasises this is her determination to go everywhere, front every allegation that anyone can throw at her and that's what's made for uh, all of this um, messy looking uh, interactions that we've seen in the package just then. But, um, but does it work it, Lenore because every time she does this she was on television again this morning and the, the constant question is why did you lie? Well I think that's the point. If you looked at this week uh, just on the basis of facts it should have been a good week for the government. I mean a lot of the industries which were supposed to be wiped off the map by this tax said no they're not going to be wiped off the map. The impact on households is pretty small, a lot of them are going to get compensated etc etc but really at the end of the week it doesn't feel like it was a good week for the government at all and I think that's because it's really coming down to a question of not facts but trust and at the end of the week the really interesting thing is Julia Gillard keeps saying oh the facts speak for themselves and the facts will win in the end. Tony Abbott keeps more and more coming back to that question of trust. Can you trust her? Do you trust her? Do you trust the Treasury modelling? Do you trust their figures? And so it's really becoming almost a debate that's gone beyond the facts of the matter. But with Tony Abbott, can you trust Tony Abbott not to exaggerate the situation? It, it's, there should be a question of trust on both sides. Well, possibly, but that's <coughs> not what seems to be being perceived in the electorate. And I think you can't really only blame Tony Abbott for that. I mean, the government has brought a lot of this on itself with yeah. the broken promise, with all its flip-flopping on the issue. But I think for the government in particular, it's coming down to a question of... Jared, will perseverance pay out in the end? Well, it's not just a matter of trust. I think it's partly that. But, but in this report in the Sunday Age today, there's Gary Stevenson. What he says is, what about my job security? What about the security of the Latrobe Valley? There were no answers at this meeting, and that's the problem. There are a lot of, there are a lot of workers around, and people in small business, independent contractors, they're not being compensated. And some of the workers think they're going to lose their jobs, and no one can tell them that they're not going to lose their jobs. Julie, get, the Prime Minister couldn't tell this group at Hazelwood that they would not lose their jobs. That's the problem with jobs. But the Prime Minister not assurances to that group of people. I mean, this well, is, this is, that's this going is to worry a lot. Of, this is the very sharp yeah. end of this policy, yeah. right? But it look, reminds me of John Howard visiting sales. Journalist in group. secure employment and relatively well off can say that. But if you have got a, a, a spouse and a couple of kids, let me finish. If you've got a spouse and a couple People's of kids concerns. and I'm you just live saying in... that that's Julia Gillard's If you've got a spouse and a couple of... Of... I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just saying if you've got a spouse and a couple of children oh. and you live in the Latrobe Valley, you have every reason to be worried about this. I, and it's I'm not, not a question, saying they it's don't. It's not a question of whether the Prime Minister broke a promise or not. It's a question of whether you're going to have a job in a year's but time. Jared, of That's course, the issue. both policies proposed to close down the Hazelwood Coal uh, Station well, early, is, so the insecurity is... for people in those jobs would be similar no matter who was yeah, but, in government. Yeah, but... And in both cases, it's a question of economic transition. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, but... not questioning okay. the insecurity Malcolm either. Malcolm what do you think? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm tearing his harem and just sort of getting... Yeah, yeah. Make it quick. We want Make to get back to <laughs> I advise the viewers to watch Jared's hands. <laughs> <laughs> This debate is going to be uh, won or lost electorally in the suburbs, not in the coal mines or the, or the zinc refineries or the alumina refineries. And the big issue in the suburb is whether, uh, whether Julia Gillard will do the right thing by people. And if you've got... And at least two polls have got her personal rating at somewhere like 30%, which means something like 70% of the electorate either is not listening to her or seriously discounting everything she says. Well, so she has to go out there and confront that and the only way to do it is to turn up everywhere and often. There is one other way to do it. Spend $12 million on advertising and that started and we'll have a look at part of that now. Other countries around the world are doing it because they're building huge industries on the back of it. And those jobs should and could just as well be here. We see the amount of money that Germany's thrown towards research and development of solar power, and they've got stuff all some. That there's so much potential there to really become one of the world's leaders in this technology. The transformation that we are about to undergo is a similar transformation to the Industrial Revolution. 
So, surprise, surprise, you can see from that they're promoting an idea rather than trying to explain the details. Yeah. That's the way it always happens. Well, that's the Sunday Papers and now uh, the interview with uh, former Prime Minister John Howard recorded in his Sydney offices.